Abba Father, tonight we can just shout out and say, we are children of the Most High God. Yahweh Elohim, the creator of this earth and of heaven and of everything in it and on it. What a privilege. Thank you, Messiah, that you died for us on that cross and you paid the price in full so that we can stand tonight and say, we are children of the Most High God. Thank you, Father, that your promise is never to forsake us. Thank you that your promise is, Father, to give us a future and a hope, Father God. Because we know, Abba Father, as children of the Most High God, there's a place for us with you in heaven. Thank you, Abba Father, that we can stand tonight and we can say, Father, have your way in this place. Father, come and teach us. Come and show us in your word, Abba Father who we are, so that we can walk out boldly, Abba Father, and go and declare the good news of the gospel, Abba Father, wherever we are. Father, I pray tonight that you will touch my lips with a coal of fire and burn away everything that's not from you. That I will only speak your truth and nothing but your truth. Have your way in this place, Father. I pray that tonight, Father, the lies of the enemy will be completely demolished. I pray, Father God, that people will come tonight and see, Abba Father, who they are. That they will see how you created them. That they will know that their design is through the hand of Almighty Yahweh Elohim. Unique. No one else like them on this earth. You are the God who sees each and every one of us. You are the God who knows our names. You are the God who wrote our names in the palm of your hands. Father, and tonight we can stand and declare we are children of the Most High God. In the mighty name of Messiah Yeshua, have your way in this place tonight, Abba Father. Come teach us. Amen. Kies die iPad, kry ook koud vanavond. Hy is bykie baie stadig vanavond. Ok. Right. If I were to ask you who you are, if you walk into a crowd of people that you've never known before and somebody comes up to you and say, good day, I'm Aurelie Schreiling, who are you? Then we will answer depending on who is in the crowd. Am I correct? If you are at a school function where there's children with other moms, you will say, I'm Aurelie, I'm the mother of Dominique and Gabrielle. This is their grades. If you are in a work environment, you will say, I'm Aurelie, I'm a pharmacist. I work for this company. I've been for, with them for such a long time. This is my responsibilities at the company. When people get to know you for the first time with your husband, when you introduce yourself, you will say, I'm Marilise, I'm the, I'm the wife of Christoph Freiling. But my brother and my sister, none of this it's actually who you really are. None of this is who you really are. This is just a job description. This is just your different roles that you play. First and foremost, you are a creation of Yahweh Elohim. 
When we look at the picture of who I am, we've got to start at the beginning. From where Abba Father created us. That's where we have to start. So we were all created by Abba Father. What amazes me is that so many, how many billions of people on this earth and each and every one of them has a unique fingerprint. Each and every one of us is unique. Even twins, even though they look alike, they are absolutely unique in their characteristics. Each of us, Abba Father calls by name. He knows us. He calls us by name. When he made us, when he created us, he says, I created you in your mother's womb. And I created, I just didn't slap you together. I created you very, very securely. I created you and I wove you together intricately. So Father God took his time because he knew exactly what you had to look like, what the characteristics is that he was going to give you. He knows exactly what your purpose is. He knows whether you were supposed to be male or female. Not male in a female's body or female in a male's body. He's not confused. He was very specific at every design of every human being. Female, male. So listen to this. When we are human beings, we have certain characteristics. And certain characteristics are good, and certain characteristics we have to work on. Am I right? But even those characteristics that's not so good, listen to what Abba Father says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Our brother Harry said this morning, we are but dust held together by the grace of Abba Father. So when I am a child of the Most High God, and He created me, I am a vessel in His hand. Listen. Psalm 139, 16 says, Your eyes could see me as an embryo, but in your books all my days were already written. My days had been shaped before any of them existed. In verse 15, he says, even my bones weren't hidden from him when he wove me together. So now, when we look at who we are, let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the creation. Genesis 1.27. So God created humankind in his own image. Of, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So when we look at the Hebrew of created, created means he created you. He's the potter. He takes this heap of dust and he puts you on the potter's wheel. He knows exactly what you must look like. He knows exactly what shape you need to have. He knows exactly how tall you are, what color eyes you will have. He knows exactly, exactly what you need to look like. And then he shapes you. He fashions you. He creates you. As he creates heaven and earth and everything on it, he created you. You just didn't end up with a big bang in this earth, he created you with his own hands. He fashioned you. He intricately wove together and formed you as a person. Right. So then we've got to look at this created. In Hebrew, in this verse, this created has an extra word added to it. It says created Eth. So the Hebrew is bara eth, but the eth is not translated in English because there's no word that you can use to translate it in English. But this eth means that it, it, 
there is a sign, it says here, it's a sign or a signal, a distinguishing mark, a banner, a remembrance. So, if you look at the Hebrew picture, it means that is, it is something, a traveler that travels towards a certain mark, okay? There's a certain standard or a flag, so you travel towards a certain mark. So when Abba Father created each of us, it wasn't a, mm, what will I do with her today? Will I give her long hair, short hair? Will I make her long? Will I make her thin? Will I make her, what purpose will I give her? Abba Father knew exactly when he created you. Exactly what characteristics he was going to give you. He knew exactly what you had to look like. There was this mark. He created you. There was this mark that he worked towards. And he says, we were created in his image. Now we know that John 4.24 says, God is spirit. Okay? So this image we know is Salem. The Hebrew word for image is salem. Image is the image, it's the likeness or the resemblance of something. Okay? But listen to the Hebrew picture of image. It says, an outline or a representation of an original as a shadow is the outline of the original. Listen again. An outline or representation of an original as a shadow is the outline of the original. So, Abba Father says, you have been made in my image. In other words, Abba Father is the original image. And we are as the shadow, as the resemblance of this original picture of Abba Father. The word likeness, okay, first of all, I want to go to, to, and also this image, sorry, there's also a root meaning that means to shade. So now I want to take you to Genesis 5 verse 2. I'll start at 5 verse 1. Here is the genealogy of Adam. On the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of, dog, of God. That likeness is also he made them in the resemblance of God, like God, in the image of God, in the likeness of God. We resemble the image of Abba Father. Okay? Verse 2 says, he created them male and female. Listen to this. He created them. He formed them. Male and female. He blessed them and called them Adam humankind, on the day they were. He created them. There was a definite plan when Abba Father created you. He, know, he knew exactly how he had to create you, exactly what characteristics he was going to give you, because the characteristics that he gives you is so that you can live your purpose on this earth for him. And then he blessed you. And then he called you. Right, let's look at the word blessed. So blessed is barak. Blessed means to kneel. And blessed means to bless. Okay. So the Hebrew picture here is the bending of the knee to drink from a pond, the bliss. That is the action of it, okay? Or present a gift. So this gift, with the gift, there is the filling of the palm. If you receive a gift, you receive a gift in, in, in your hands, the filling of the palm. That's the action of it. So this bless, barak, is literally this action of bowing down and then the receiving of a gift. The word called in Hebrew is kara. It means to proclaim 
It means to appoint. It means to be named. It means to be chosen. So, Abba Father calls us by our name. We were chosen by him. This kara has a root word, and the root word means to meet or to encounter. So this call, this kara is to proclaim, okay? It is to appoint, it's to be named, it's to be chosen, but it's also this meeting. Right. So now, this Hebrew picture that I've just described here for you, do you know where else in the word you find this Hebrew picture? Is there any of you? How about Jeremiah 1, verse 5? Does it sound similar? Let's see. Abba Father says, Before I formed you, before I fashioned you, before I created you, because the word formed is yatsar, and it means to form, to fashion, okay? Of divine activity, of creation, of individuals at conception. You, you fashion, you design according to a plan, right? So that is that create according to a plan, right? Formed. I knew you, that knew is yada, and I'm explaining this again, and I know there's lots of you that know this, but I'm explaining it for those of you that do not know this, this verse, because it's important to explain this. So yada is to know, to learn to know, to perceive and see, to find out and discern, to know by experience, to know, to be acquainted with, to have knowledge, to be wise, okay? And then it says, I knew you before you were born. I separated you. That is the complete Jewish Bible. In the King James, it says, I sanctified you. So sanctified is the word kadash, and it means to consecrate you, to sanctify you, to, to be holy, to be sanctified, to be set apart for Abba Father. Okay? And then the last word is ordained. In the, King, in the complete Jewish Bible, it says, I have appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. I have ordained you. This ordained is to give, to bestow, to appoint, to assign, or to designate. So when Abba says, I created you, he says, before I formed you, before I created you, I knew you. And then he says, and then I blessed you. So, in that blessed is that kneeling down, that bowing down to Abba Father in obedience, that receiving of the gifts. So it is that absolute separation for Abba Father. And then he equips you with everything that you need to live your purpose for him here on earth. And then he calls you. He sanctifies you. He, he, he comes and he appoints you. He appoints you in the office where you need to serve him. The picture is repeated. So, I asked Abba Father, Abba Father, this is the picture that you've given us of who we are. But now, as human beings, we don't always live that picture. We sometimes stray from our purpose. He gave me the example of Peter. So now we all know Peter, right? 
Peter was one of the first disciples that Yeshua called. He was a fisherman. So he called him and he said, come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. But the, the verse says, listen to this in Matthew 4, 18. And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee and saw two brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. He saw them. That saw is to see, to perceive with the eyes, to know. How do we perceive things? It's through the door of our eyes we see. So he saw them. He perceived them. It's to know them. Why did he know them? Because he created them. He created them. And he blessed them. He gave them. He, he equipped them to do what he wanted them to do on this earth. Being the fishermen was just the work that they were doing. That was just the, the, the office that they were in. But the work for Abba Father, he equipped them. And that's why he didn't just walk along and say, mm, those two look like they could be my disciples. Come, let me call them. He knew exactly who he was going to call to be his disciples. He saw them. He perceived them. He knew them. Because he knew them when he created them. And he had already equipped them to live a life for him. So Peter lived with Messiah. He followed him. He lived with Messiah. He experienced the miracles of Yeshua firsthand. His mother-in-law was sick when Yeshua came for dinner. And Yeshua healed his mother-in-law. Closer than that you can't get. So he, was, he had first-hand experience of, of the healing miracles of Yeshua. Then Peter was also the one that got out of the boat. Remember that? In that storm, on that sea, on the storm? Nobody else got out the boat, but Peter said, Lord, if it's you, I'm going to get out and I'll walk towards you. And he walked. He walked on water. But the minute that he took his eyes off Messiah and he looked at the raging ocean, he started to sink. The minute that we take our eyes off Messiah, then we start to look at circumstances and we listen to the lies of the enemy. We see all the circumstances in the world that doesn't look very fruitful. It doesn't look like it will be a blessing to us. And then we get despondent. And then we start doubting. Peter knew that Yeshua was the Son of God. He proclaimed it. Yeshua answered him, and, and in Matthew 16, 17, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So Peter knew Abba Father. He walked with Messiah. Peter knew what his purpose was. Listen to what Yeshua says to him. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That was the purpose of Peter. Here's Peter, a fisherman. The son of the most high God calls him and says, come walk with me. Be my disciple. I want to teach you. He has this tremendous faith in Abba Father. He gets out of a boat in a raging sea. He, he acknowledges him as the son of God. He knows Messiah. Right? He has a purpose. Abba Father says, so you will be the rock that I will build my church on. And the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Then as Peter goes along, Messiah knew exactly what he was going to come and do on earth. 
So at some stage, Messiah was foretelling his death and his resurrection. And Kepha took him aside and immediately started rebuking him. Heaven be merciful, Lord, by no means will this happen to you. And what did Abba Father say to him? Get ye behind me, Satan. He didn't call Peter Satan, but he saw the works of the enemy. That's why he said to him, get ye behind me, Satan. Right. In the garden of Gethsemane, Yeshua told his disciples that they will all forsake him. <laughs> but Peter proclaimed, I won't forsake you, Lord. I will lay down my life for you, but I will not forsake you. And Yeshua said to him, you're going to deny me three times before the night is over. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter was the one that wanted to protect Yeshua when the guards came to come and fetch him. And he cut off the ear of one of the soldiers. And Yeshua said to him, now put away your sword. And he healed the ear of the, of the soldier. So Peter I would say, if you look at Peter, you would say, sure, this is really a man of faith. I can't imagine him not living the purpose that he was created for. Right? So, you and I, what, what stops us from living the purpose that Abba Father so intricately wove into our, our being? When he had the specific plan that he created and formed us to. Right, now, Peter, they took, the soldiers took Yeshua. The word says Peter followed them from afar. You can already see that there's doubt starting to settle in Peter. There's a bit of a fear starting to settle in Peter. Because he didn't walk next to Yeshua with the gods. He followed them from afar. Okay? So this afar is a state of separation physically. Of distance and of place. So this already tells me, when I get derailed from my purpose, am I following Yeshua from afar? Am I putting distance between me and the Word of God? Because am I following from afar? When I am in between believers, it's so easy to speak, to get out of the boat, to stand up for what I believe in. When I'm the only one in a crowd of people that don't believe. And they make a joke with filthy language. What do I do? Do I laugh with them? Or do I say, no guys, mm -mm, that's not the language that children of God must use. When somebody takes something that doesn't belong to them at work, do I just look the other way? How do we react when the so-called godly people don't see us? Because on a Sunday, we can be very holy. But how do we react during the week when the, the, the children of God is not with me? I will never forget, I was in Israel, and we were standing at this house of Caiaphas. And I was standing there, and I was saying to Abba, Father, Abba, how could Peter ever deny you? And not just once, three times. You will not believe me. At that point in time, I still get goose flesh. There was a cock that crowed. Not once, three times. We first thought it was a recording. I couldn't believe it. It was like, where did that come from? And then when it cried again, I thought, no, but it's not a recording. It comes from the valley. And Abba Father said to me, Marilise, how many times have you denied me? How many times when you're out there in the world have you denied me? 
So now when we look at Peter, he just had this amazing walk with Yeshua. He knew him intimately. He slept with him. He ate with him. He ministered with him. And here Peter comes. And he follows him from afar. And when he gets to the outer court, he stands there with the other people. And one of the ladies who stood at the gate said, Hmm, are you not Peter that was following Yeshua? Said, Weren't you one of the followers of Yeshua? And he said, No, 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 that wasn't me. And then other people recognized him as well. And the God whose ear he cut off also said, Weren't you in the garden? And he said, no, 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 that wasn't me. And he stood there with them and he warmed himself. Peter, you put distance between you and Yeshua. You followed him from afar. And now, Peter, you are standing warming yourself with the perpetrators. The people that just sent Yeshua to their death. To Yeshua to his death. What happened, Peter? Where did you miss it? Did, did Yeshua not tell you that you will be the rock that my church will be built on? Brother and sister, how many times do we stray from our purpose? Because you see, when we are made in the image of Abba Father, it is in his likeness. So, and for a shadow to form, there has to be an original, um, say, an original item. A shadow can't form from nothing. A shadow forms from something that is original, that you can touch, that you can feel, and then when the light shines on it, the shadow is cast. So, he walked with the Yeshua. He is created by Abba Father, in the likeness of Abba Father. So Abba Father's, the, the dwelling presence of Abba Father is with him. This light of Abba Father, the light of Messiah shines through Peter. And he reflects the shadow of the almighty Yahweh Elohim. But when he starts following from afar. When fear sets in and he thinks, I'm not going to tell them that I followed Yeshua because they might kill me as well. I'm sure that's what went through his mind. I'm sure he thought, oh, I don't want to risk it. They're going to kill me as well. They're going to hang me as well. They're going to crucify me as well. Immediately there, he was standing in between the people in the outer court, the people that knew that Messiah is on his way to be crucified, the people that were a part of it. And he warmed himself at the fire because it was early in the morning and it was cold and it was still dark. So there was also a shadow. But the shadow that was starting to take over everything at that point in time was a dark shadow. It wasn't the light of Messiah shining through Peter and showing the likeness of Yahweh Elohim. This was a shadow of fear, a shadow which followed Messiah from afar. What moves you and me to start following Messiah from afar? What moves you and me to stop the light of Messiah shining through us so that the light of Messiah can be reflected through us and the shadow that we cast is the light of Messiah shining through us, is the light of the original, the original, the originator, God, Yahweh Elohim, his image, his likeness shining through us and casting a shadow. What stops that, my brother and sister? What stops that so that the shadow that you and I cast is not a shadow of, of, of the reflection of Abba Father, but it's a shadow of darkness, a shadow of fear?
This darkness. The Hebrew word is skotos. It's of darkened eyesight or blindness. You know when you walk in the dark, you can't see clearly? You can bump into things? Listen to this. Of ignorance respecting divine things and human duties and the accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with the consent, cons, consequent misery in hell. Do you want me to read that to you again? Of ignorance respecting divine things, ignorance of respecting divine things and human duties, and the accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with their consequent misery in hell. This is that darkness. And the root word of this darkness, the base of this darkness, is this shade, the shadow. But it's a dark shadow. It's a darkness. And it's the word skier. So now what happens? Yeshua is crucified. And he arises. The word said, Peter turned around and he ran outside and he cried bitterly when he realized, because when the cock crowed, he realized, Yeshua told me that I'm going to deny him three times. You can imagine what Peter felt like. His heart must have been broken. He must have just fallen in front of Abba Father and just pleaded for him to forgive him. I can just see him sobbing. Then Yeshua arose from the dead. And then Yeshua meets up with Peter again after his resurrection. And what does Yeshua do? Because my brother and sister, like Harry said this morning, the biggest thing for us to return to purpose is repentance. So what did Peter do? He immediately had that repentant heart. He immediately had that heart that was completely broken. He immediately fell down and he was sobbing when he realized what he did. He immediately repented. So what does Yeshua do? Yeshua restores his purpose. Listen to this. John 21, 15 to 17. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me more than these. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my lambs. 16, verse 16. He says to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He says unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because immediately Peter thought, I must, I think in his mind immediately thought, Yeshua is reminding him that he, or, or he immediately thought Yeshua was thinking of the fact that he denied him three times. So Yeshua is asking him now, because Yeshua wants to make sure, that's not what Yeshua did. Yeshua asked him, because Yeshua restored him to purpose. Yeshua didn't ask him, say, mm, you denied me three times. No, he asked him because he wanted to restore purpose. Peter to purpose. So he asked him for a third time. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, that lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Brother and sister, I want to tell you that your God-ordained design doesn't change because you are starting to follow Yeshua from afar. It never changes. Peter, even though he denied Yeshua, his purpose did not change. 
the, the way that he was created, the characteristics that Abba Father gave to him, the gifts that he gave to him to live his purpose did not change. So if you are at a place tonight where you think, I can't even see Yeshua anymore. I am so far away from him. I'm so far away from him. I've strayed so far. I can't even think of my purpose anymore. I can tell you, your purpose will never change because it was God-breathed. Your purpose doesn't change. And all that Abba Father wants is for you to come back to his feet and repent, and he will restore you. Listen what happens after Peter is restored. His purpose is restored. Acts 5, 12 to 16. Meanwhile, through the emissaries, many signs and miracles continued to be done among the people. United in mind and purpose, the believers met in Shlomo's colonnade. And no one's out dared to join them. Nevertheless, the people continued to regard them highly. And throngs of believers were added to the Lord, both men and women. What was the word again? Female and male. Both men and women were added to the Lord. They went so far as to bring the sick into the streets and lay them on mattresses and stretches so that at least Kephas, Kephas' shadow might fall on them as he passed by. He was restored and all of a sudden as he walks, when his shadow falls on people, they get healed. They get set free. All of a sudden when his shadow falls, then people get added to Abba Father's kingdom. What shadow? It was the light of Messiah shining onto Peter. And the, the shadow that Peter cast was the image of Yahweh Elohim. It was the image of the creator of this universe. And that was what healed the people. It wasn't Peter in his own right. It was Messiah within him. Crowds also ga gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and every one of them was healed. Every one of them. So this shadow, it's a shade caused by the interception of light, an image cast by an object representing the form of that object. So the shadow that Peter cast was representing the form of the creator of the universe. Is that not amazing? Peter restored. Do you know, when Adam and Eve was in the dwelling presence of Abba Father, there was no sin. But when they were cast out the garden, they sinned, and they were cast out. And the minute that they were cast out, then we had to make a choice. They had to make a choice. Who do I serve? Do I serve the prince of this world, Satan? Or do I serve Yahweh Elohim? Do I serve Yahweh Elohim and accept his son as my Messiah? And do I rejoice every day in the amazing price he paid for my life so that I can run to the throne of Abba Father? That is the choice that you and I have to make. And according to the choice that you and I make, that is the shadow that will be cast. Peter reflected the image of Messiah as a child of Yahweh Elohim, a joint heir of Messiah. Galatians 4, 6, 7. Now because you are sons, God has sent forth into our hearts the spirit of his son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, that is dear father. So through God you are no longer a slave but a son. And you are a son 
you are also an heir. Right. So when we look at the creator of this universe and we look at his character, we see that his character is full of compassion, gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and in truth. And love. So much love. That is the character of the creator of this universe, Yahweh Elohim. Listen again. Full of compassion, gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and in truth. So, when the shadow of Yahweh Elohim, when the light of Yahweh Elohim shines on you and you cast the shadow, that resemblance to Yahweh Elohim, then you are casting the character of the Creator as you walk. And then this fruit. <coughs> Sorry. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, self control. But Satan also has a character. So, Satan, let's look at his character. He's a tempter. He was so full of himself that he even tempted the Son of God. He's a tempter. Matthew 4 3. The ruler of demons. Matthew 12 24. The God of this age. 2 Corinthians 4 4. He's the evil one. 1 John 5 18. And he's a roaring lion that devours and kills and destroys. 1 Peter 5 8. So, he's a tempter, he's a deceiver, he's a liar, he's a rebel, he's a destroyer, he's a killer. So when you decide to serve him, this is the shadow that you're casting. The character of the enemy. And then, then there is fruit. Sexual immorality, impurity, indecency, involvement with the occult and with drugs, infuding, fighting, becoming jealous and getting angry in selfish ambition, factualism, intrigue, envy, drunkenness, orgies and things like these. That will be the fruit. Listen to what Yeshua says to the Judeans. The Judeans was his fellow countrymen. Listen to what he says to them in John 8. He says, they answered him, Our father is Abraham. Yeshua replied, If you are children of Abraham, then do the things of Abraham, then do the things that Abraham did. As it is, you are out to kill me. A man who has told you the truth which I heard from God, Avram did nothing like that. You are doing the things your father does. We're not illegitimate children, they said to him. We have only one father, God. Yeshua replied to them, If God were your father, you would love me. Because I came out from God, and now I have arrived here. I do not come on my own. He sent me. Why don't you understand what I'm saying? Because you can't bear to listen to my message. You belong to your father, Satan. You want to carry out your father's desires. From the start, he was a murderer. He has never stood by the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he is speaking in character because he is a liar, indeed the inventor of the lie. But as for me, because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. Which one of you can show me where I'm wrong? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God listens to what God says. The reason you don't listen is that you don't belong to God. You have a choice. If your design got muddled in your walk through this earth, tonight our Father is calling you back to purpose. 
And you need to make a choice. When we cast the shadow of light, those that is in darkness can be set free. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1 to 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto him. The shadow of Abba Father cast unto him, his image. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commended the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This reminded me of a movie that I saw. And I don't know, do you know Overcomer? Have you seen the movie Overcomer? So, for those of you that hasn't seen the movie, it's a Christian movie. It's all about a high school basketball coach, John Harrison and his team, that face an uncertain future when the town's largest manufacturing plant shuts down unexpectedly. As hundreds of people move away, John reluctantly agrees to coach the cross-country team, a sport he doesn't even like. His outlook soon changes when he meets Hannah Scott, an unlikely runner who pursues herself, who pushes herself to the limit, inspired by the words and prayers of a new friend. John starts to train Hannah for the biggest race of her young life. This Hannah in the movie, she has very bad asthma. She, so she's the most unlikely candidate to do, to run, to partake in this cross-running race, cross-country running race. So this movie is all about to say our identity isn't based on our jobs or roles, our talents, our passions. No matter how important those th things might seem, instead, who we are at the deepest level flows from our relationship with our Savior Yeshua, whose love and grace shape our identity as his children. Hannah Scott, at the end of the movie, her coach asks her, Hannah, who are you? And she goes and she studies Ephesians 1 and 2. And this is her answer. I am created by God. He designed me, so I am not a mistake. His son died for me just so that I could be forgiven. He picked me to be his own, so I am chosen. He redeemed me, so I am wanted. He showed me grace, just so I could be saved. He has a future for me, because he loves me. So I don't wonder anymore, Coach Harrison. I am a child of God. Can you say that tonight? Can you say? I am created by God. He designed me. So I am not a mistake. His son died for me just so I could be forgiven. He picked me to be his own. So I am chosen. He redeemed me, so I am wanted. He showed me his grace just so I could be saved. He has a future for me because he loves me. So I've made my choice. I am a child of God. 
Can you say that tonight? Can you say that with me? Stand. Let's stand. Can you repeat with me? I am a child of God. Amen. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are of God's making, created in union with the Messiah Yeshua, for a life of good actions, already prepared by God for us to do. Would it be amazing if we can walk in the light of Messiah, Messiah shines through us and our shadow is cast on people and because of the shadow that He casts, it's His shadow, it's His image that's reflected. People get healed, people get set free. I definitely want that. I am a child of God. And God tonight wants to restore you to purpose. So if you have been walking a path where you have sort of looked at him from afar, my brother and sister, then tonight I want you to please come forward because tonight our Father wants to restore you in purpose. I want you to take this time with him. And if you feel moved, I ask you to please come so that I can pray with you. He is my rock, my strength, my song. Yes, I belong to Jesus. When it's clear the world is not my Abba Father, you are such an amazing Father. There is never a time, Abba Father, where you turn your back towards us if we come running to your throne with a repentive heart, with a heart that we want to tear and say, Father, forgive, forgive us because we have sinned. Father, my brothers and my sisters that's standing here with me tonight, Father, they have strayed from their purpose. Father, they have missed their design. They have followed Messiah from afar and they have not seen the hand of Yahweh Elohim, the creator that created you in his image. Father, their faith has dwindled. Father God, but it, tonight, Father, I know that you are standing in heaven and you are smiling, Abba Father, because they've come to say, Daddy God, here I am. I am sorry. Father, I ask that you will please restore them to purpose. Father, I ask that the works of the enemy in their lives tonight is now null and void. Father God, from now on, they will not just follow Yeshua from afar. They will take up the word of Abba Father and they will eat the word of Abba Father. They will di dissect your living word, Abba Father, so that it becomes part of who they are. The word, Father, your living word will become a lamp onto their feet. Thank you, Father, that every chain that the enemy has bound them with is now demolished in the mighty name of Messiah Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, Father, that your light will shine through them, Father, and the shadow that they will cast as they walk will be the image of their Creator. Thank you, Abba, Father, that we can declare tonight we are children of the Most High God. Each and every one of them standing here tonight is a child of Yahweh Elohim. 
thank you, Father, that you have called each of them by their name. You have created them. You have equipped them with characteristics, Abba, Father, to live their purpose. Thank you, Father, that those, that those characteristics has not been removed. Their purpose has not been removed. Because, Father, when you breathe over us, Nothing can change it because this has been breathed by Yahweh Elohim, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it and on it. Your purpose, child of God, is the same. When Abba Father created you, when He formed you, when He sanctified and ordained you before you were even born, your purpose is the same. Father, and I pray tonight that as they're standing in, they might be saying, Father, but I have been so far away from you that I've lost sight of my purpose. Child of God, as you walk with Abba, as you read your word every day, as you bow your knee, He will restore your purpose. He will once again lead you into your purpose. And you know exactly what your purpose is. And only Father God can give you and restore you that purpose. Only he can, he can open up that purpose again. Thank you, Father, that it will be so. Thank you, Father, that I can pray for a renewed, steadfast faith. Thank you, Father, that I can pray for a boldness, Father, to walk as a child of God. Thank you, Father, that I can pray for a boldness, Abba Father, that they will speak, that they will stand up for your righteousness, Abba Father, even if nobody's looking. Thank you, Abba Father, that they can walk and wherever they go, just by the way that they walk and the shadow that they cast, people will know this is a child of the Most High God. Thank you, Abba Father, that you say in your word, we can withstand the enemy and he will flee. Thank you, Father, that I can pray over them tonight, that tonight they will take up the authority that they have in the blood of Messiah Yeshua, <coughs> who died for them on that cross, who paid the price for each and every one of them. And they can take up that authority tonight and they can withstand the enemy and he will flee from them. Thank you, Father, that the works of the enemy in their lives has been cancelled out tonight in the mighty name of Messiah. Child of God, you will not ever return on that road where you see Messiah from afar. You will know Him. You will yada with Him. You will get to know Him intimately. And you will go where He leads you to go. You will speak when He leads you to speak. You will bring the good news of the gospel to this dry and parched world. You will not waver in your faith. You will stand as a child of the almighty Yahweh Elohim. Thank you, Abba Father, that it will be so. In the mighty name of your Son, Yeshua Messiah. Amen. Amen. Please receive the blessing of Abba Father. Ye verege ga Adonai wees my regha. Ya er Adonai panavelegha wegunegha. Ye sa Adonai panavelegha weshem legha shalom. May Yahweh Elohim bless you and keep you. May Yahweh Elohim lift up His face towards you and show you His favor. May Yahweh Elohim lift up His countenance towards you and give you His shalom peace. Thank you, Abba Father, that it will be so in the mighty name of your Son, our Redeemer, our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Son of God, Yahweh Elohim. Amen.